Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and this is not the episode to play drinking games to. Especially if you're going to take shots if I say DC or Batman. Especially Batman. If you add in Robo Don't Know, then you might as well call an ambulance right now, because you're in trouble. Well, McFarlane, too. Don't add in Todd McFarlane. He just happened to go on a streak this week, and... So did DC from several different companies. But again, we're just talking toys. I don't need to know everything to appreciate a good looking action figure. Neither do you. It's okay. <laughs> we're in this together. So we'll just jump right into the deep end with the McFarlane Toys Warhammer 40k Dark Tide figures. Dark Tide? Dark Tide? Dark Tide. Robo don't know. Chug, chug. Now this is cool because, again, it's great looking designs and it's nice to get humanoid characters in a, a toy line that seems to be mostly big ass armors and scary monsters. They're getting a lot of mileage out of the Trader Guard with both a variant and an artist proof, with Night Vision look being my favorite, but all three are spiffy with the sharp pointy spiky things. Now I'm guessing, and I should know better than to do this by now because I can hear you, I can see you right now. Fingers hovering, just ready to tell me what's going on with these characters. But I'm guessing that these are the antagonists, while the veteran guardsman plays more of the protagonist role. Again, I like the mask and overall feel, but there's an artist proof of this too, where there is a variant unmasked face, and I would have liked to have seen that painted too. Maybe that'll be down the line or some kind of different version or something. Am I at least safe in assuming that these and the traitor guards are in the grunt variety? Just army builders to fill out your Warhammer ranks? $20 a pop available everywhere except for the traitor guard variant with the green lenses. That's a GameStop exclusive. Links are all in the description. McFarlane Toys. They also gave us our first look at their avatar, The Way of Water, Jake Sully. I knew the new movie was coming this year, but I had completely blanked that the original was 13 years ago. Has it been that long? Whew, I'm getting old. And wasn't the toy line for the first movie Mattel? I think I only picked up the Jake from that line too, but more than that, what shoots into my brain is another Mattel line that finds its home at McFarlane. Saying that though, this does look good. The face is slightly soft, like it's hard to tell what's going on there. So I'll wait for the less moody solicitation pictures to show up before I do any judging. Not that I don't like this. In fact, I love it as a tease. The background, the lighting, it sets the mood. But action figure wise, we don't know what's going on until it's in a neutral position, white background. We can pick out joints and paints and proportions and what's going on here and what's going on there. I need a close up. You know how it is. This ain't our first rodeo. To end the McFarland block of this weekly, but start the DC segment, there's the Page Punchers Injustice 2 comic assortment. Green Arrow is mostly reuse of the first Injustice 2 figure, bringing a new head to the party along with resculpted thighs to remove the straps. And that's cool. For all of the new sculpting that goes into Todd's DC efforts, there still needs to be some rehashes to balance the books to keep the budget in line. Plus, it just gives more people more options. If you're into Ollie with the hat and bigger mask, ba-boom, here you go. If you don't like the hat or you want a smaller mask, that option's already out there. Everybody's happy. Right? Come on. Be happy. And then look. Oh, it's a Batman. I poke fun at this trend while some other people are downright mean about it on the internets, but it's Batman. I guarantee there's sales spreadsheets and big old pie charts in an office somewhere telling Todd that it is worth his time to be making Batmans. This time around, it's Armored Batman. No, not like that Armored Batman, and not like that other one either. It's a different Armored Batman. The included comic seems to point out Supergirl and another Doctor Fate as filling out this wave, but they also teased an Injustice 2 Flash and Captain Cold. I'm guessing they're already moving into wave two of the Page Punchers Injustice 2 line. At least that seems to be the word on the mean toy streets. But then there's also the Target exclusive Batman the Animated Series Designer Edition. This actually kicks off Target's Fall Geek Out, which is going to be every Friday for the next month. Not just McFarlane, it's going to be other companies. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Basically, this is the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse animated style Batman with a new cape. And when I first saw the the teaser, lightning, thunder, I thought, oh, it'd be neat to get that background base thing. And boom, that is included along with some package lighting. You push the button and 
And there's also a signed edition if that's your thing. But today's Target Geek Out didn't end there. There's also the retro Batman 66 Alfred as Batman. Are you, are you feeling it yet? Yeah, it's just the Batman figure with a new head, which comes off as kind of cheesy, but at the same time, that's the spirit of Batman 66. It's neat to see things like this in plastic form. May not be up everybody's alley, but maybe that's why these are Target exclusive. The, more limited run. To take it a step further, there's also the Batman 66 Lunchbox 4-pack with Batman, Robin, Joker, and Penguin. These are all just redecos that kind of call back to the trading cards of the 66 era, I think. I read that somewhere. I can't confirm that though. Robo don't know. At first I thought Batman and Robin had new head sculpts because of the whited out mask holes, but zooming in you can see the eye details, especially on Robin. And it kind of freaks me out. Holy lack of soul, Batman! I do like the darker color schemes though, and I love the lunchbox. I haven't actually jumped into the line yet, but this would make a nice icebreaker, just as a set unto itself, unless they're going to do more repaints. Were there more trading cards? Surely there was. Links are all in the description. All that Batman talk transitions nicely into Joker from the Justice League Snyder Cut. This is from Caillou Models, and it is licensed product, which is blowing my mind because it does come with actual realistic type guns. Does uh, WB know about this? Is this another sign that they may be loosening the leash, or is this a company that just doesn't give a shit? They're gonna put it out ask for forgiveness later. Other accessories include hands, joker card, mask, crowbar, crown of thorns, and is that Robin's mask? I did find a listing that says hidden accessory times one related to next release of this line. So there's more mystery surrounding it. Oh, and there are two sets of hair, one kind of windswept, one neutral, and then two heads with different portraits. The hair pieces do give it kind of a helmet look, but the faces themselves, they're nice likenesses. Especially up close, look at them. Look at me! <laughs> Wrong joker, sorry. Bottom line though, I don't know this company. I don't know their track record, if they have one, and I don't know their intentions. So pre-order at your own peril. $85 ETA, late 2022, early 2023. But let's flip back to Batman with the Mezco 112th Collective DC Golden Age Cape Crusader Edition. Or, parentheses, that blue Batman that came in the two-pack with Two-Face in black. Same sculpts, same accessories, same everything except for the base color. And hey, there ain't nothing wrong with that. It's a common practice. Mattel's done it, McFarland's done it, Medicom's done it, a boatload of other companies. And if it works, it works. This works. It was already a nice looking Batman, but if you didn't want to drop the money on that two pack, here's your chance at exactly half the price of that set. Although when I do think of classic or golden age, my mind drifts to blue, but again, this works. Comes with various heads, various hands, a rebreather, something for the bat belt, batarangs, bolas, bat stuff. Mezco exclusive, which usually means a quick sellout, but this hung around for just a bit. Well, okay, it's solicited Wednesday. Mezco announced on Thursday that pre-orders would be closing soon, three hours later that same day, wait list. Ooh, marketing. $95 scheduled to release here in the next couple of months. It's nearing the end of the month, you know what that means. It's time for Medicom to announce another pair of Moffex figures. First, the Battle Damaged Robocop takes previous Moffex figures, which were damn awesome, and fills them full of bullet holes and metal tears. You can still spy some purple and blue accents here and there, but your eye is actually drawn to the blood splatter and the oozing blue goo. Oozing blue goo. You get the rifle, you get alternate pieces to simulate that opening thigh holster gimmick, you get the data spike, but most importantly, you get baby food jars. No, 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 those are nifty, don't get me wrong, but I think the big draw here is the exposed Murphy face. And then looking just as battered and beat up, there is the Terminator 2 T-800. The torn away flesh, the hanging down metal tubes, the exposed knee that uses the actual joint to accentuate the robot look. This is just a badass looking figure. A bit lean on the accessories though, it comes with a metal rod, there's a shooty shooty weapon, and then a melting thumbs up hand. Can I just get that to have a tiny bit of Terminator representation on my shelves? No? Fine, Metacom, whatever. And get ready for the groans. You may wanna buy these for a dollar, but you're gonna have to add 79 more, plus shipping when these release in the future sometime. You know how it is with Mephex. You pre-order it, you forget about it. 
practice, there's no need to worry for that long. You don't need that kind of stress. Then when it pops up, it's a surprise. You're like, did I pre-order that? However long ago it was? It was a long time ago. We've had the McFarland segment. We've had the DC segment. Let's officially start the Robo Don't Know segment. You're just pouring drinks back and forth. You should just line them up. That just save you some trouble. But Robo don't know gargles. So when the Toy Collector magazine cover revealed Coldstone, I thought, well, I know that's from Gargoyles, but I don't know that character. I can pick out the main cast, and I can even name some before getting them confused. That definitely doesn't mean this is not a kick-ass action figure, though. Is there too many negatives in that sentence? Oh, I think that's right. Or wrong. Who cares? And yes, let's get it out of the way. Those are some big old wings. I think that is still the major talking point of this line. Just how much shelf real estate these take. Would've been cool to use those nubs up at the top as swivels to fold in the wings a bit, but I don't know. If you like them, you like them. If you're buying them, you're buying them. And if you're interested in the nostalgia of reading about action figures in magazine format, I've put the Toy Collector subscription info down in the description. But then there is the Robo Don't Know Coupe de Grace, Power Rangers. A whole week of Power Rangers reveals. Monday there was Dino Thunder Yellow Ranger, and while I don't know the show, I can look at these figures and go, oh, that head may just work for a Marvel's husk. You know, Cannonball Sister, that's how deep I have to go to make a custom that I'm sure Marvel Legends isn't gonna make. See, I can find something interesting in any toy line, which is both a blessing and a curse, mostly on my wallet. On Tuesday came Power Rangers X Street Fighter Lightning Collection Morphed Ryu Crimson Hawk Ranger. It's just messing with us now, right? All those words just, I didn't even know there was a Power Rangers Street Fighter crossover, but it does look like a nice mashup. It works. There's fighting involved. <laughs> well, okay, maybe that's the only connection I can think of off the top of my head, but th there's fighting. It does skew Power Rangers more than Street Fighter, and Unmasked Ryu would have went a long way here, but I'm gonna guess that there's some kind of complicated licensing going on. Like, you can use this, but you can't go full on this. And I can take everything I just said and apply it to Wednesday's morphed Chun-Li Phoenix Ranger. Well, okay, I didn't mention the power effects. Ryus are awesome. Chun-Li's are just icing on the cake. It's, they're another level. The kicks. And this showcases more Street Fighter flavor, which we can chalk up to Chun-Li wearing a more elaborate outfit than just a white gi and a red headband. That just makes sense. You can see her costume here. Also during the live stream, they mentioned that there will be more offerings from this collaboration. I'm glad you got to see these first two characters. That live stream was held Thursday, and with that came more deluxe offerings. I don't know what Time Force Blue Ranger and Vector Cycle is, but to me, it's a futuristic bike with big ol' honking guns on the side. That's some firepower. That's right up my alley. Also, check out how nice the Ranger sits on it. This whole presentation is just slick. But we all know where my true passion lies with the weird and wacky monsters that I can use anywhere on the shelf, and that's what had my eyes flying over to Snizzard, which is how they said it, so that's how I'm saying it. I am fighting the urge to blurt out Snizzard, which sounds like a substitute PE teacher at Hogwarts. But I don't want to dress out Coach Snizzard. It still catches me off guard at how many monsters are out there that I had no clue existed. It's a lizard with snakes for arms and legs and tongues and bow and arrow. Like most of the monsters though, it could use a paint wash and some extra detailing, but I think that goes back to budget. Kind of like these costing as much as the Street Fighter mashups. It, it, again, does that fall back on licensing? For future releases, they showed Dino Charge Blue and is this Bumblebee? Okay, stop, I'm joking. It's Beast Morpher's Yellow Ranger. Again, to someone like me, the heads look excellent for customs and then the bodies seem like good fodder. I'm not into Power Rangers, so when I buy these, they're exclusively to make into other characters for other shells, so I'm not doubling up. Finally, as promised, the Hasbro Marvel Legends team stuck to their plan of revealing something new on the 20th of every month, even though this month it was a Sunday. Here is the retro-carded Ghost Rider, and yeah, I think it's kind of funny that he has to squat down to fit inside the package. The body's been reused a couple of times, first in the Rhino Wave in all black, and then the riders wave in the blue leathers. This time it's a black jacket gray pants to replicate the old Toy Biz release, but that did stir up some hornets. Mostly because this color scheme has always been associated with Danny Ketch, and 
that original Toy Biz figure was him with the extra spikes on it. Even though the package doesn't say Johnny Blaze, the release info did. So this is meant to be Johnny because it does match his more recent King of Hell look. So the reason for Bees and Bonnets is because Ketch hasn't had a classic figure in quite a while while Blaze has had a few. Those do go for pretty pennies these days though, so it's nice to have main characters out there for newer collectors or in case you missed it the first time around. I can see the Danny side of the argument though. We need a new version of him and his bike. Maybe this is just the tip of the iceberg since the next Marvel HasLab is Ghost Rider themed. Maybe more retro cards or even a whole wave to coincide with that? More deluxes with bikes? Who knows, we'll have to wait and see. This retro release though, it does come with a new igniting Johnny head along with skeletal hands, which it, to me is the most tempting. It changes up the look a bit. $28 releases March of 2023, but I'll bet a fiddle of gold against your soul that it'll come out before that. And that's all I have for this week. That's how I'm gonna say it from now on because I may have missed something. If I did, we'll swing back around next week. If you'd like to see any of these pictures up close without me all, Batman, DC, McFarlane, Robo Don't Know. Hello, 911? I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. But if you can't wait that long, check the description. Like I mentioned earlier, the Target Geek Out started today with McFarlane offerings. That'll be on every Friday for the next month. Well, all throughout September, I guess. September 2nd and 9th next week, and then the next week it's gonna be NECA. After that, Mattel is on the 16th and it says G.I. Joe on the 23rd. So I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff. Oh, and Funko's on September 30th, but have we talked about anything Funko in a while? Oh, I guess Game of Thrones. Oh, and the Firefly line that they never finished. So no, we don't talk about Funko. If you enjoyed the weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. Wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the whoosh. Something that popped up earlier too, I saw the pre-orders for the 2000 AD Mean Machine and the black and white Judge Death wasn't it? Weren't we supposed to get a 112th scale line there? And if they go as in depth as they are with the four inch line, I'm excited. I want to know more. Hiya, come on. <laughs> Let's get this started. See what's going on. Or maybe the sales of the four inch line are so great that they figure, why are we going to make a six inch line? Let's just keep going with the four inch. Or are they going to fill out and kind of go as far as they can with the four inch and then hit us with the six inch? Who knows? I'm wondering be cool.